Hello, precious one. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nina Eche. Good news, cry, I, and me. We thank God for such a wonderful afternoon that God has blessed us with. Precious ones at home and you here present, you are all welcome again. You will allow those that have zoomed in to introduce themselves, and then we'll go ahead with our program for today. We are here to have fun. We are here to learn. Kiss Down with Jesus is here to educate all children around the world about the word of God. You will learn a lot from here. There are questions that you may have in your mind that nobody has answered. And through this program, as we learn and have fun, you'll be able to get answers to some questions that you've always been wondering or you've always been trying to have answers to. So stay tuned, get engaged, get a paper, get a pen and write them down. And through it all, we'll all have fun and glory will be given to God, amen. So we'll allow the first person to introduce, um, uh, to start with an introduction and everybody will introduce themselves. So let's start with the first person. My name is Deborah Atapong and I'm from Chicago region. Hi, my name is Jesse Ajamai and I'm from Chicago region. My name is James Ose Ampofo and I'm from the PIWC New York region. Hi, my name is Ario Aquada and I'm from the Hartford district. Hi, my name is Evelyn Ose and I'm from Chicago district. Hi, my name is Darren Afori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Darren Declan Afori from Cleveland District. Hello, my name is Benedict DeBoer from the Cincinnati District. Precious ones, you are all welcome to today's program, Case Time with Jesus. We love you all. We appreciate your time. You're all looking beautiful and handsome and you at home. So we are here to have some fun. We are still in the month of April and in the month of April has been set aside. We all know what happens in April. Um, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. But Kiss Time with Jesus, Children's Ministry, COP USA, and we have set the month out there to educate and also to learn about the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. Last week, we did talk about the resurrection of Christ. And today we are continuing. We are continuing with our lesson. We are going to look at the importance of Christ's resurrection to our lives. And that is what we'll be talking about this afternoon. Before we even start with a story um, about the resurrection of Christ and the importance of um, Christ's resurrection, it is time for us to learn our memory verse. It is always important as precious ones to learn our memory verses. So this afternoon, we'll be learning our memory verse and our memory verse will be taken from um, Luke, Chapter 24, verse 6 to 7. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 to 7. And I read, he is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners but, and be crucified. And on the third day, be raised again. Amen. 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 So precious ones, we are going to go over our memory verse this week. And then after that, practices at home, practice it at home. And then you can call someone, a family member, a Sunday school teacher, and share with them, a friend, and share with them. So our memory verse for this week, again, is Luke chapter 24, verse 6 to 7. And let's read it together. One go. He is not here. Amen. Sometimes I love the echo where um some start and some are about to start, but at the end of the day, some will still finish and the others will have to join. I love that echoing. God richly bless all of you. God bless all of us. Um, 
we are going to go ahead right now and do our memory. We'll do our scripture reading, our, um, our scripture reading for the week, our scripture reading. And our scripture reading um, is Luke. We are going to read two scriptures. The first one, Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. And then the other person, the second person will read for us, Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 35. And the topic for this afternoon is the part two of the resurrection of Christ Jesus, the resurrection of our Christ Jesus. So um, Jesse, you can go ahead and read the first uh, scripture for us. Um, Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. Thank you, Auntie Nina. You Again, welcome. I will be reading Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12 from the NIV version. It reads, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Two, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Three, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Four, while they were wondering about this, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Five, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Six, he is not here. He has risen. Remember how he had told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Seven, the son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Eight, then they remembered his words. Nine, when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. 10, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who had told this to the apostles. 11, but they did not believe the woman because their words seemed to them like nonsense. 12, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw strips of linen lying by themselves and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Amen. Amen. Amen, Mr. Jesse. God richly bless you. And Benedict, can you read the Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 35 for us? Thank you. You're welcome. Luke chapter 24, verse 13. And I read from the NIV. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Amasas, 11 miles from Jerusalem. They were walking with each other about, every, about everything that happened. 15. As they walked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. 16. But when they were, but they were kept from recognizing him. They asked him, what were you discussing together as you walked along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there were in these days? 19. What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. 20. The chief priest and our ruler handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we have hope that he is the one who is going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. 22. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb earlier this morning. 23. But they did not find this body. They came and told us they have seen a vision of angels who, is, who, he's, who said he was alive. 24. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman said but they did not see Jesus. 25, he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe that the prophets have spoken. 26, did, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter the glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he ex explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village which they were going, Jesus continued as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay of us, for it's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So I want to stay with them. 30. When he, was with the, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. 
Then their eyes were open and they recognized him, but it disappeared before their sight. They asked each other, were, were our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and he opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with him assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon, day five. Then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. 35. Benedict. Yes. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God. That's a powerful reading. Uh, God bless you, Benedict and uh, Jesse. We thank all of you for reading for us. So precious ones, as we all know from the scripture, we read it last week and um, it has been read again. But as Christians, our faith is centered on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We rejoice knowing that Jesus Christ has indeed risen from the dead, giving believers victory over sin and death. The Bible says, where all death is your victory, where all death is your sting, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, precious ones, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because just as you're doing this afternoon, you should have been praying, right? But you are here. You have given yourself fully to the work of God. Because you know that your labor in the Lord will not be in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 58. We, like Christ's earlier followers, we should joyfully share the good news of Jesus' resurrection to those around us, just as we are doing this afternoon. Precious ones, great lesson we learned last week about the resurrection of Christ. We gave great contribution. And this afternoon, we are here again continuing with the resurrection of Christ. As we all know, Jesus is not among the dead any longer. He is alive. He reigns in the heart of Christians and he is the head of his church. He is the head of his church. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is a central fact for all Christians, for all of us, right? When we go to the Bibles to read from history, that is the central fact. And on it, the church is built. Without it, there wouldn't be no church of today. Jesus' resurrection is unique, right? Only Christianity has a God who would become human, literally died for his people and raised again in power and in glory to rule his church forever. Oh, hallelujah. Precious ones, why is Christ's resurrection so important? Why is it so important for us this afternoon? Why? Why is it so important? Yes, Benedict. Well, it gives us the power to change. And that's what I'll be talking about. It gives when, us the power to change. Yes. When, when we were back in sin, like, there was totally no hope for us that we'll be finally be able to escape and everything in this of devoid the devil, there was like no hope. And that we were in repetitive sin, like like me, for example, upset the video games, like when your parents tell you not to do something, you keep on doing that repetitive sin that is very hard to stop. Like we were like chaining there. But Jesus, when when he was when he, when the resurrection took place, he gave us the power to change. Good changes can even be uncomfortable and scary. Like the Israelites in slavery in Egypt, at first resisted Moses and attempted to free, attempted to free them, believing Moses was a troublemaker and was making things worse for them. Indeed, things got worse, but they got better. Exodus five. At the pool of Bethesda, Jesus found an infirm man who suffered a condition for a long time. Interestingly, 
Jesus asked him, do you want to just get well? John 5, 6. The strange question was a logical purpose. But before Jesus introduced the man to lifelong change, he wanted to know, do you really want this? Are you more comfortable with your life begging and living off in charity with others? Or are you ready to change? Oh, what is the blood of Jesus when we're standing change? Can you never know where it will take you? The blood of Jesus is all the last main and the backing up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Great, great, great answer and great contribution too. God richly bless you, Benedict. What the resurrection of Christ gave us the opportunity to what? To change, right? So um, when it comes to renewal of our mind, uh, behavior change wise, right? So I always say that there's nothing that is permanent, right? There's nothing that is permanent when it comes to, I, I hear a lot of kids say that, oh, I'm, I'm really good. I'm, I'm trying to stop, but I can't stop. I'm trying to stay away from doing this thing that I know is bad, but auntie, it's hard to stop. The Bible is telling us this afternoon through the resurrection of Christ that what? This just as a word, um, Benedict just said, renewal of our minds, right? And also behavior change. We can change. We can do it. Through the resurrection power of our Christ Jesus, we have to change. We've been born anew. We are new create. Uh, 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 we, we've been created new. Therefore, nothing should bind you in doing something you don't want to do, right? And God bless you, uh, Benedict. Fantastic contribution. God richly bless you. Deborah Hand was at. Does any before Deborah comes in? Um, does anybody want to contribute to um, the point that Benedict? Uh, put on the floor about um about about his point with regards to um what he said what through the the importance of the resurrection um uh, why we said that why is it important um uh, why is it important that for the resurrection of Christ sorry excuse me um why is it important right through the resurrection of Christ what is in it for us the resurrection for Christ, what is it in for us? And Benedict said that word, um, through the resurrection of Christ, what? We can be changed, right? You can change. You can have a renewal thinking and a behavior change. It is possible for you, even when it looks like it is impossible. And some of um, the scriptures we can look at is in Ephesians 4 verse 22 to 24 and Romans 12 when you read the one and then the two you can take time and read that does anybody want to contribute to a Benedict's point before we can move on yes Darren I wanted to say that what Benedict said was correct because when you change there you don't only receive um the protection of God and all the other benefits but you also receive some perfect the perfect word that God has given us because when you read Romans chapter 12 verse 2 near the end it says then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will meaning when you're able, if you're able to change you'll be able to know everything about God you'll be able to know what his will for error for you is and you'll be able to work according to that will so that way you'll be able to accomplish everything that God had in plan for you You'll be able to accomplish what God has installed for you. Last week we were talking, somebody raised the point. I was talking about the good shepherd and his sheep, right? So as the good shepherd, the shepherd knows his sheep and his sheep also knows his word, the voice of his, of his master, right? So when we change everything about us, right? We are able to commune right with God, right? We are able to walk in the perfect path of Christ. So the resurrection of Christ, Christ, what it, it came with all these changes, right? We we there's nothing that should bind you by saying that I keep doing this wrong thing that I keep doing all the time because what I'm having a hard time changing through the resurrection of Christ. This afternoon, we are letting you know that what it came with a change. All things are gone. Thank God you've been born anew, right? God bless you, Benedict, uh, Benedict and Daryl. Great contribution. Yes, Deborah. Um, can I add? Yeah, you can add to it. Because he forgave our sins so we can go have a chance to go to heaven. He forgives our sins so that we what? 
will have the chance to go to heaven. Good, good, good. Through the resurrection, our sins have been forgiven so that we will get a chance to what? To go be with the Lord when the time comes. Great contribution, Deborah. God richly bless you. Yes, um, Declan. So my contribution is that I, it reminds me of a story of a Paul, the time that he was riding to Damascus to demolish all the, all the godly people. The time that he was doing that, God showed up to him and he blinded him. And at the time that he went, at the time that he could see, he was changed into a new person from Paul to Saul. From Saul to Paul. From Saul, <laughs> from Saul to Paul. Good. So great, great. I, I love that, that you're able to bring in this example. You see, so from what Declan just told, just to elaborate a little bit on that, pretty much what he's trying to see, Paul was going to do bad stuff or go harm God's people, right? But by the time he got there, because of the power of God, when he was blind, he went blind, right? And by the time everything was done, right, he changed through the resurrection of Christ, things that we do that doesn't please God. We've been born anew. God has what? He's, he's risen. He's alive. All things are gone. New things are what? I hear, right? We've been born anew. So behavior changes, things that we struggle with, things that we think we can do more. If you are reading the Bible for five minutes, now God is risen. You need to spend more time reading more, spending more hours reading your Bible. God richly bless you, Declan. God bless you. Fantastic contribution. Yes, we'll go to James and then we come to Darren. And Jean, you know, we were all talking about how people in the Bible have changed. And I just remember, I remembered about Abraham, how when he was a pagan, he used to worship different gods and his name was Abram. But when God decided to make a covenant with Abraham, the, he changed his name to well, Abraham. So, Abraham. yeah, so the different names, like how Simon became Simon Peter, which meant the rock. And it was through Simon Peter, through God, which was the rock that built the foundation of the church. So when God decides to name different people in the Bible, those names have very significant meanings. Amen. Do, amen. Fantastic country. Those names are very significant. And there is a reason why God did that, right? Because there are names that were attacked. Remember we talked about reputation, uh, reach down, right? Building good reputation and having a bad reputation, right? Here, the names from Saul to Peter, right? And then from Abram to Abraham right? These were names that were attached to something, but when they became what, when God visited them in a special way, their name changed. Why did God change their name? God changed their name because God has transformed them. God has visited them, right? So bad things are gone. New things are here. Precious ones listening to us, we need to know that the, through the resurrection of Christ, we have been born again. Your name may be the same, but spiritually, God has visited you. God has transformed you. God yeah. wants you to go out there and speak to uh, speak to your friends. The things that went at first, when your friend hits you, you go back at them. When they speak bad words, you get mad and you also want to go. God has risen. He has risen. We what? We are new create, create. Yes, hold on. I'll, I'll be with you. We are new what? We've been born anew. We are new. Therefore, therefore, precious ones, therefore, precious ones, we need to know the importance of what Christ's resurrection. And one of them is that what? We've been, what? We've been changed. We have been changed. We are not the same people again. Therefore, our life, whatever we do, should what? Should be Christ-like example, right? God richly bless all of you. Great contribution, James, and everybody that has contributed. Yes, Jesse. I'll come this, to you, Darren. Sorry. This talking about change remembered me the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he was a bad tax collector who would cheat people of what they owed. But then when Jesus came to town and Zacchaeus saw him, Jesus offered, he said, no, I will go with this man. So he went to Zacchaeus' house for dinner and Zacchaeus confessed all the bad things he, uh, he was doing. 
So when mm. Jesus told him the right thing to do, Zacchaeus, he changed his behavior and he started to act the right way. Again, another example of change. Another example of change. God bless you, Zacchaeus. Who he thought he was smart. You see, precious ones, from what Jesse just said, the example, when Jesus visited you, everything becomes new, right? When Jesus, when he saw Jesus, his life was transformed. Jesus has risen. Our lives has been transformed. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. Great example. Ariel. Another um, uh, example of change was Jonah. When he refused to go to Nineveh to preach the gospel, then he was followed by the whale and that changed him. So then he obeyed uh, God's word and then went to preach. Amen. Fantastic example too. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. Jonah thought he was smart than God. But what? After the he went to the belly of the well, he changed. He changed. Sometimes people have to learn the hard way, right? But we pray that we may not learn the hard way. But when the word comes to us, we will obey for the first time and do God's will. He is risen. Our lives has been changed. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, um, Darren, and then we'll move on. Then Darren, then we'll go to James and we'll move on to the next point. Yeah. I have two things to say. First of all, I don't think Jonah really had much of a choice. I mean, you've just been buffed off by a big will. I don't think you want to revisit that experience again. So you just, <laughs> and plus, according to the Bible, after he he gave them, the people of Nineveh the message, he was still waiting for God to destroy the, the land. That means that he had he never actually had a change of heart. He just did what God wanted him to do, but not the actual change of heart. And my second thing I want to say is that actually the names that God gave people and rock, it's supposed to depict who you are. So that means that, let's say Abraham. Abraham now means father of nations. So if God had never given him that name, it would have just been father of many. And I think that God gave people names so that it would actually depict what they were going to do in their life. So the name that you have, it actually means what you are trying to do. Great contribution, great contribution. But it's also, it adds to what um, James have said earlier. Still, there was a name, even though the name depicts that, it's still, it's, it's a re, it's still a, a renewal of some, it's, it's a change, it's a new change still. Great contribution. You've added to James' contribution. God richly bless you. Yes, James. I wanted to say that um, when Jesus died, he, um, that brought about a whole level of change for Christians because when he died and said, it is finished, the temple veil was torn in half. And back then, during the Jewish community, it was only the, um, the high priest and the priest who could go to the, the inner parts of the temple where the veil was covering. But when Jesus died, um, that was like the way that we knew that salvation came to the world. Because when he died, the, the veil was torn, meaning that anybody who repented of their sins, gave themselves to Christ, could now quote unquote, go to the inner parts of the temple. So Jesus's death brought about lots of change spiritually for Christians. Spiritually for Christians. I would say physically too, because when you change spiritually, it manifests physically as well too. That is why sometimes there'll be that, oh, this boy is so humble, right? It started from within before he came out, right? So spiritually and physically, when God visits you, Oh, you become a new person. You, 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 your life transformed. So through Christ's death, as James said, that what everything is done, it's, it's over, it is finished, right? It, it was totally finished. And that's why now we can sin so many times and go together. God have mercy. I'm sorry, God, forgive me. And God will forgive you because he's what? He's what? The merciful father, right? So God bless you. Great contribution, James. Um, are we moving on now or is still contribution on, on the floor? We have to move through our, our, our importance. Why the resurrection of Christ? Yes, um, Declan. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually kind of a short um, contribution that's, that's what Paul, like speaking of Paul, 
and other stuff and change. When Paul was changed, it was also like he was born again. So let's say that you're an unbeliever. And then now you have lived from your sin and then come to Jesus. You are born again and you have also changed physically and spiritually. Thank you for adding to it. So when we say change, uh, we are saying that you've been born again too. God richly bless you. Uh, yes, James. But don't you have to be baptized by the Holy Spirit and baptized with water before like the final stages of your change is complete? If you were an unbeliever. Or if you're an unbeliever, you need to accept the Lord. First of all, you have to make a decision to accept the Lord as, as, as your personal savior, right? Once you accept the Lord, you need to make a decision to change from where you are to, um, uh, let's say you're on the wrong path to come to a, um, a good path, right? And then once you come there, it's just like a baby. When they are born, they have to be fed so that what? They begin to grow. So first of all, when the word of God goes to them and they realize that they've been living um, not the will of God's way, and now they want to change, they make a decision to change. You've been born again, then you will make the right decision. I'm going to follow Christ. I accept the Lord. It's a confession. Once you're done with that, then you need what the church walks you through, the word of God, so that what they begin to feed you with milk. And gradually, as you get to know the changes and, and, and the word of God become more versed in you, and then you they talk about the baptism, right? You want to be baptized and, and you go through those lectures and, and the word of God, why is it important for you to be baptized? And then you get the Holy Spirit, what baptism too, where you begin to speak in tongues. So it is all stages and it's all part of when you, the first day you make a decision, of what being born again, being be accepting the Christ as your Lord and personal savior. And then after that, then the pastor or the, the church uh, presbytery will walk you through. They will have sections of walking you through the word of God, step by step. And then once you begin to get more the word of God, the God begins to work on you and you have more change of heart. And then you may think that, okay, I need to baptize through immersion right? And then you go through that. And whilst you're doing that, you, you if you want to get interested in getting the Holy Ghost baptism through speaking in tongues, it is, it's a stages. God will visit you. And when, when you accept him, you make a confession and accept him, God begins to work on you and transform you. Yes. Um, James, is it a follow-up of your question or is it a new one? I have a new question. <laughs> okay. Let Jesse go, go first and then you can come in, James. I also had a question. Okay, you can go. Would you, do you think that it's disrespectful to be baptized like many times? Disrespectful to God? Yes. I don't, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't wanna say yes and I don't wanna say no. There may be a reason why you want to be baptized, but I have not personally, in Church of Pentecost, I have not seen anybody getting baptized several, many times, right? I know the Church of Pentecost, um, we baptize through immersion in water, right? We don't sprinkle water on people's head and all that. We immerse you in water and you go through teachings so that by the time you are done by immersion, you know, You've been fully baptized and you'll be satisfied. And I don't think you may want to have another decision of getting baptized again. Maybe it can be that you move from a church that didn't do that. And you come to Church of Pentecost and you see after going through the teachings, you realize that, you know what? I understand the message right now when it comes to the immersion of, of baptism. And therefore now I've made another decision that I want to go through the COP baptism of immersion and you go through that. That is also different. But when you're in Church of Pentecost and you keep baptizing, going through those sessions, I don't think, um, it's not that it's not allowed, but I, I've never seen one in church before um um do that frequently yeah i guess i don't know what i've answered your question but you can also follow up with 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 pastor too okay 
but I, I, I don't think there's something wrong with that. It may be somebody's personal decision, but I have not seen anybody done it over and over and over. Is it disrespectful? I wouldn't say yes. Maybe the person is doing that for a reason. And once that reason is explained to the pastor and the presbytery of the church, there may be a reason why they have to go with the gate. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we come to James and then Benedict. I actually wanted to like answer Jesse's question. Okay, you can go ahead. I, I was thinking that it depends on the reason why the person is being baptized many times. And yeah, it depends why, because it's not per se that you're actually being disrespectful. We don't know your reason as to why you're going to baptize many times. But maybe if there, somebody has to come back many, many times, maybe they're, they weren't ready the first time. Because if, if you commit yourself to baptize, baptism is actually like a sacred ordeal. It's very symbolic. Like when you go into the water, the water is supposed to symbolically wash off your old self, wash yes. off all your sins. And then when you come out of the water, then you, you're a new person. And then you can't sin anymore. You have to be an, a, a spiritually stronger person. So baptism, maybe that person was already. That's just one of the possible answers as to why someone might baptize themselves more than once. Yeah, and to add to what James said too, you see, it, the fact that, you see, through Christ's death, now you can always go to God and ask for forgiveness of sins and God will forgive you. So because of that, you don't have to go through baptism of imagine all the time when you go wrong with God personally to go and be baptized again. When you repent from your sins and you are faithful and just, you go to God, God will forgive you of your sins if you repent, right? And don't go and do it so many times and always go and ask for forgiveness of sins. So sometimes, even though it may be, there may be a reason why you will go over, you go do the baptism. Past, if you keep doing it, I'm sure the pastor will call you and ask you one and okay, you know what? Come and let's have some conversation. Why do you want to do this over and over? And through that, as James said too, um, that reason may, may lead to doing it again, right? But most of the time, if you've, you've, you've gone wrong with God, when you go to God and wholeheartedly, if you repent from your sin and ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you of your sins. It is between you and God. You don't really have to go through that immersion of baptism again, unless it is something else that you think you have to go to the pastor and have a conversation and get it done. When we say over and over, this is about doing it about baptism more than four times or five times, right? That is where it becomes. But is it disrespectful? Uh, not really. There should be a reason why you're doing what you're doing. And then the pastors will be able to work you through that. God richly bless you. That's a great question and great contribution from James too. Um, Benedict, and then we will have to move on, okay? I usually look at this, this question as an aspect as a snake root usually sheds their skin. Like this baptism, like James said, you it's a kind of like a spiritual renewal. So maybe not ready yet or like, you haven't completely, like, you're still on the neutral side because you have to be on positive. I'm going to follow Christ. I'm like, I'm ready for this to happen or not positive, negative, which I'm not really know. And if you're still negative, nothing is going to change because you need Jesus in your life for the Holy Spirit to function right. That's why all the people say, accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior first. And then the pastors and the presbyters start talking to them about the Holy Spirit and baptism. So that is probably why that we don't usually see people being baptized more than two, 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 two to three times because they sincerely let Jesus into their lives and are ready. God bless you. Fantastic contribution. James, are we moving on? Uh, if you want to, we can move on. I was going to add on to Benedict, but we can move on. 
Okay, add on and then we have to move on, okay? All right, I was going to say that what Benedict said about accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior first, that was a good thing because um, as an as a unbeliever going to become a Christian, that's the first step you have to accept. And we were all born in sin. That's why we need to be baptized because when we came out of our mother's womb, we were born in sin. But when we get inside the water to baptize ourselves, we are being born again. The water, it's not like literally the water's washing us. This is a spiritual symbol of what yeah. Jesus Christ is doing to us mm -hmm. as, as we're being baptized. And then once you accept him as your Lord and personal savior, like you said, it's like giving a baby milk. Then once the baby drinks milk and it gets its nutrients, then you go and baptize yourself. Now you can walk. So then there are different stages of the um, rebirth process that every um, unbeliever has to go through before they become a Christian. Amen. Great contribution. Prophet James, great one. Fantastic. We need to move on, precious ones. Why, 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 why is the resurrection of Christ so important to our lives? Um, um, Benedict said about um, it changes you, right? And that's where we talked about all what we've been talking about being born anew, uh, all things are passed away, uh, we've been born again. Um, behavior changes, we change. And we talked about Abraham being Abraham now, we're talking about Saul to Paul. And um, um, what else? What else, precious ones? What else? Why is Christ's resurrection so important to us? Why? Yes, Ellen. I think the resurrection is so important because um, that is basically Jesus resurrecting and being in like, that is him spiritually cleansing our sins because if he had died and not, and had not resurrected, then would have just been like a normal human being who just died and like is going to heaven or or is going to heaven. So him resurrecting, then going to heaven, us seeing him, him physically just shows that our sins has been cleansed because he has come up from the grave. He's now a new person. He didn't stay dead. Our Christ is 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 risen. Jesus is risen. He is alive. He's alive and he's, he's, he dwells among us now. He's alive. He didn't stay dead. And he would. He rose victoriously. He is with us, right? So, um, yes, he, yes, yes, yes. When he died on the cross, he said it was finished. He took away everything. He took away everything. By his stripes, all sicknesses were healed. He was giving that tongue sharp um, crown on. He bled right through that. He died. He was tortured, right? All for us. All for us. And then on Thursday, he resurrected from the dead. Go, hallelujah, glory be unto the Lord. Yes, Benedict. Starting the topic. How many of you have been used to be scared of the dark? Keyword. Used to the power of blood, the power of Jesus' blood gives us the power to conquer our fears. Like my example, honestly, I used to be afraid of the dark, and Mama told me to go to the basement and go get me like three bottles of water. I'm like, uh, maybe Samuel can do it, or Samuel, can you please come with me? Yes, we all used to be scared of something, but the power of Jesus' blood gives gives the power to overcome the fears. That's why whenever you feel scared, or the blood beats, or my mom always tells me to sing a song that relates to Jesus, so it will give me strength to go down to the basement and bring us some water. God bless you. The power of his resurrection has conquered fear. Has conquered fear. Now we are not afraid. When you read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15, and Psalm 27, verse 1, fear has been conquered. We, are, we shouldn't be afraid any longer. Fear, people fear, there are people that fear the dark, some fear math, some fear academic stuff, fear snakes. Of, of, of snakes. Oh, I'm scared of snakes. <laughs> fear of something. But through his resurrection power, all fear has been conquered. So when you get sick, oh, do not be scared. You have to believe that you are healed. Why? Through the power of his resurrection. Yes, uh, Ariel. 
I remember I used to be really, really scared of what people thought about me. I would be super anxious and always think about the bad things about myself instead of the good. But ever since I got into it, I got engaged with the power of God and started reading really closely. I've been really like driving away from those intrusive thoughts and doing better mentally. Powerful example. Powerful one. God bless you, Ariel. Precious ones. When you have God, if you have, if you are in the camp of Christ, if you are in the camp of Jesus, precious ones, you are not afraid of anything. You shouldn't be afraid of that bully at school. You shouldn't be afraid of that bully in that in your neighborhood, right? Through the power of of through or the the power of resurrection, fear has been conquered, right? So if you are scared or, and afraid of what people will say about you, or afraid that you'll do something and get it will not get it right, and people are going to laugh at you, no, don't be. Oh, through the power of his resurrection, you regain your self-esteem, right? You are proud of yourself. You are confident. Whatever you do, you do it and do it well. Why? Because what? The power, through the power of his resurrection, oh, you've been made new, right? You've, you've changed. Your confidence is with you. Don't be worried about what people say, the negative things they say about you. Be proud of yourself. Have confidence in you. You're in the camp of Jesus, right? And through his resurrection, all, all fear are gone. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by things that comes your way. Because if you do that, it will put you down. And that is the works of the enemy. And we do not have to be let down. We do not have, we cannot allow ourselves to be put down, right, precious ones? Let's what? Have confidence in ourselves. Fear is gone. When Jesus resurrected, he took away fear. Yes, we want to relate to that. Darren, your hand is up. And then we go to Jesse. I wanted to uh, say that when you were talking about fear, it reminded me of the scripture verse of when you read Psalm 27 verse 1. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall mm. I fear? And this was David speaking, the guy who went up against a giant. So I'm pretty mm. sure what he was talking about. Because when every time you're going up against this and your, your life is literally at risk every day, I'm sure you know what you're talking about when you say that you, you are not afraid of anything. If you are not afraid of anything, perfect, perfect contribution, um, Darren. And Darren says something that even David, that word killed what Goliath right? Said that what? Jesus, he's not afraid. That it means he knows what he's talking about, precious one. If you know what is in the power, the power of the, the, the power through that resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, if you understand what it means that it has wiped away your fear, if you understand it, then you will walk. When you walk, you'll be so proud and so confident in your own self. Why? Because God resurrected with fear. He took it away, right? So you need to be confident in yourself. Great contribution, Darren. God bless you. Yes, Jesse, and then we go to Darren. While we were still talking about fear, it remembered me of a memory verse, Joshua chapter one, verse nine. The first part, it said, have I not told you to be, have I not told you to not be afraid? Be courageous. This is a great way to say that Jesus, no, God is telling us that we shouldn't be afraid because he will always be with us throughout. He will always be with us throughout. That, and that we shouldn't be afraid. Great contribution, Jesse. God richly bless you. Yes, Benedict. I just want to add that a lot of people that I met, including my, my Sunday school, have had a fear of death, like dying early. But the thing is, when Jesus came, he took that fear away because... Jesus, here's the thing, Jesus gives us the time for our life. But whenever you sin, people tell me this a lot, even my mom told me that when you sin, it takes away time for our life. So that thing of that aspect of sin, we should avoid sin at all costs. And that took away their fear of death. God bless even you. God even bless you. We shouldn't be afraid of death, right? When you hear somebody is sick, we shouldn't be afraid that they're going to die before their time. 
God took away that fear of death. God didn't stay. God, you remember in my introduction, I said one, Christianity is the only religion that the, uh, somebody died and would stay dead. Um, sorry, in Christianity, Christianity is the only religion that would, our God died, Jesus died, and what rose again, he didn't stay, he didn't remain dead, right? Other religions, yes, they're still there, they're still being buried, they're down there, right? But thanks be to God, you and I, the Lord we serve, Jesus Christ, he died, and on the third day, he resurrected, he rose from the dead, and he took away fear, he made what our life, he transformed our life. Precious ones, this is the God you and I serve. We need to be proud of ourselves. We are in the camp of Christ. We are in the camp of Jesus. Therefore, we should what, not be scared of death because what? He conquered death and he rose again. When we die, we are going to be with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, let's go to Jesse Amen. and then Declan. And then we have to move on after Declan, okay? So some people, they were saying that, oh, I'm afraid of death and I'm afraid of snakes. These are the two most popular things combined with evil. So this shows us that not only does Jesus have power, that not, that not only Jesus took away all fears, but also shows us that Jesus has power over evil. Because mm. in because First Peter chapter 4, verse 8, it says, the last part, it says the person that is in me is greater than the ones that are against me. Amen. Amen. Power over evil. Power over evil. You can access power over evil forces of what? Demonic activities. When you read Luke chapter 10, verse 19, and Colossians 2, 12 to 15, power over evil. Through the power of his resurrection, we have what? We have power over evil. Power over evil. Precious words. We have power, but sometimes we don't know how to exhibit it. We don't know how to use it, right? We have power. It's just like uh, giving um, um, a sword or to someone and telling them that when you see, or a stick to someone that when you see this thing coming, I want you to hit it. And you see and somebody attacking you or an animal attacking you, and you just stand there. You have the stick in your hand. You have a sword in your hand, but it's still there. You don't know how to use it. Hmm. Is it because you don't know that you have power to do that? Is it because you, you don't know that the stick that is meant for you is to use to protect yourself? Is it that we don't know? That is why we need to read the Bible. The Bible has to be our closest friend, right? Because the Bible, the word of God is our sword to use. When the enemy come against us, when the enemy want to attack us, we have the word of God as our sword to use against him. Yes, we will go to Ariel and come to Benedict. The topic, you have power over evil, kind of reminds me of the scripture, Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will I'll mm. hold you with your righteous hand. So it's basically saying anything that the evil one plans against us, we have power over it because he, uh, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, because he is strengthening, strengthening us and upholding us with his right hand. We have power, precious ones. We have power, and I'll keep saying it. We have power through the power of his resurrection. You and I have power over evil forces, right? We need to know that. We have power. Let's stand firm. Let's stand and use the word of God. We have power. Area, God bless you. Let's go to Benedict. I just want to add to what you said, Tina, because this reminds me of Eris, when I say stuff from the past, I'm in the future, that stick kind of reminds me of that. Because, the stick example, because in the end time, the people are going to be sitting in the Antichrist are going to come into full power. It's going to look like they're almost in full control. Like they're going to be causing chaos and mayhem before Jesus comes. And people will have the power, the Christian, the elect, especially, I'm talking about the elected. Could you be the one Satan really wants to get a hold of? Could they in the end time are the ones who are going to be changing, changing the, changing 360 over here? So bless you. So yeah, sorry. So 
mistake some Christians who really have that power will be too shy and they won't know how to use it. So they will use them and convince them to go to the other side. We as Christians have to stand firm and learn how to use our swords. This sword that I'm talking about, this thing that's called the Bible, the holy thing, that the only remnants that we have of the word of God that he sent the prophets and others to write down on these pieces of paper. These are the only things we have left of God. Let us use this Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us use the Bible. Let us use, let us glue to the Bible. It is important for us to use the Bible. It is important for us to read the Bible. I love reading the Bible because anytime I read the Bible, I learn something new every day. I learn something new every day. And I learn so much from all of you all the time after we do a recording and you come up with great ideas, I will go home and 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 I will be reading. And I'm like, oh, so this is what, oh, the Benedict or Darren or Declan or Ellen or Deborah or Ariel was talking about, Jesse was talking about. Yes, we all learn every day. We learn something new. The Holy Spirit will open your inner and the, uh, inner mind for you to understand how far he wants you to, to go with that. You can learn one memory verse. You will have understanding of the scripture today. The next day you revisit it. God will open your inner a mind, right? And then you will see it from another perspective too. Let us spend time to read. You don't have to read the whole Bible a day. Just read a verse or two verses and begin to ponder on them and God will open your eyes. You'll be amazed what you will learn in the, in, in the Bible. But don't wait for somebody to come and tell you something in the Bible for you to believe. Sometimes spend time and read for yourself and you will know what when you begin to read oh you will love to keep reading and keep reading and keep reading everything is in the bible everything in the is in the bible god richly bless all of you we need to move on precious ones yes darren move on yes i wanted to say that we don't just have power over evil but that we are also empowered in every way because when you read um Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and when you when you read the Bible, the Bible, when you read another in another place in the Bible, the Bible also says that God, for God's word will never fail. That means that everything that you do, you'll be successful in it due to Jesus's, Jesus dying and rising up again for us. The Lord what, has power. We have power over other things. God bless you, Darren. God richly bless you. He has what we have lordship over all. Lordship over all. Lordship over all. God richly bless you. God richly bless you. Precious ones, yes. Who want to contribute? Yes, Declan. So when you talk about when Jesus has lord, lordship over all, he means that he can control all things. Like when let's say like the miracles that he did, he has power over nature. He can, he's like, he's like a person, a person and also a spirit at the same time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. then, so then, so then when he does miracles, you, miracles, you can't do miracles. Mm. No matter what you do, you cannot do miracles. Unless, who can, unless who can do miracles? Only Jesus can. can do miracles. We can do miracles to God can work through humans. God can work through us to do miracles. That is why when we go to church today and you are not feeling well, the pastor will lay hands on you and pray for you and you become healed. God can work through you, precious ones, you, right there, sitting there. God can use you to heal the sick, to raise the dead. All you have to do is to believe in the power of his resurrection. God has given us what? God can use his power through us to do miracles, right? So it's not only God that has to do it. God works through us now in his time. That is why when we are in trouble, when we go through a situation, we cry on God. You see, pastors pray. We all pray to God to use us. Right? So when you pray, when you desire, God can use you. God can use you to heal. God can use you to open the eyes of the blind. God can use you to turn water into wine. God can use you to move mountains. God can use us. 
all we have to do is to believe and desire and ask God for it and God will use you, precious ones. Don't forget that God can use his power. He can operate through us, okay? God richly bless you. Great contribution, Declan and Darren. Yes, we need to move on. We need to move on. We've talked about what? We've been become what? Born again. Through the resurrection power, fear has been conquered, right? We have also talked about um, the lordship, the lordship of, 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 of over all, the lordship over all. He's what? The omniscient, omnipresent. He's everywhere, right? God, God, God is so powerful. Yes. And then what? We can also bring about through his resurrection power, we have victory, right? We can rejoice and be victorious. We are an overcomer in life, right? Having a, a winning attitude, having a winning attitude. When you read 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54, and then John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, right? What? We need to rejoice and be what? Be victorious. We need to have a winning attitude, right? We need to have that. We are victorious. We are winners. We are not losers. Don't look down upon yourself through the power of his resurrection. What? We are victorious. We are winners. Yes, James, and then we go to uh, Jesse. I was going to say that also in Jesus' resurrection, we get peace because we know that if we um if we live according to a standard, we'll go to heaven. And my Sunday school teacher said that peace means that it's nothing lacking nothing taken being made whole so then that, that basically means that when you have peace you're not lacking anything when you have peace nothing is also being taken from you and when you have peace you're always being made whole amen when you have peace everything has been made whole peace that surpasses all understanding right peace the perfect peace james great contribution nothing is taken from you right you're not lacking anything Peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. So when you have God's peace, when people are crying, right? Or you are in a difficult situation, people see you and you are at peace. There's peace within you. You need to have peace to be able to offer it to other people, right? There are people that carry the peace, that, that gift and that spirit of peace with them, right? Wherever they go and there's chaos, they get there and the spirit of peace kind of what? Kind of transform and neutralize the whole place. Peace, the power of his resurrection, it brings peace. You are at peace with yourself. God richly bless you, James. Powerful contribution. Yes, uh, James, uh, Jesse, sorry. What I wanted to say is that I wanted to add on to what you were saying, Auntie Nina. You said yes. that we should have a winning attitude. It's not just we should be bragging and gloating like, oh, I'm the best, I'm the best, Jesus died for me. But instead, we should have humility. We should be proud that Jesus was resurrected, but we should also humble ourselves. Because we we were not Jesus that resurrected. So we should have some respect and some humility. Amen. Amen. If we are victorious through the power of his resurrection, we are winners. We are, we are overcomers, right? But Jesse is also saying that as we celebrate and being proud of ourselves and we know we are winners and we are we are we are proud perfect and we are the head and not the tail we still have to what be humble christ was humble right therefore we still have to stay in a low key be proud of ourselves but we still want respectful and we are very humble right we need to carry that with us god richly bless you jesse great and contribution our great contribution god bless all of us oh and i know you humble right you are a winner you are the head and not the tail oh you are the best but still, you are still humble, right? Through the power of his resurrection, we are victorious and we are still humble. God bless all of you. Oh, I'm loving this lesson. Precious ones, we, we, let's talk about what? Through the resurrection, what? We have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Yes, precious ones, we have everlasting life. Who want to contribute to that? Yes, Declan. So Jesus when Jesus was raised from the dead, he had everlasting life. And yes, that is all. <laughs> we have everlasting great contribution, uh, Declan. 
Fantastic one. Oh, I love it. Good job. Great job. Yes, we have everlasting life. Yes, Jesse. Us having uh, everlasting life is also that we don't suffer a lot because that Jesus resurrected. We, we don't really have to suffer a lot as people had to back then because now we have the salvation of the Lord and that helps us a little bit. Amen. 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 We have an everlasting life. We don't have to suffer in, in, in what happened in the Old Testament, right? But Christ came to die in the New Testament. And what? Now through his resurrection power. Oh, we have an everlasting life. Oh, when we will die, we will go be with the Lord. We will go be with the Lord. Oh, God has is risen. He's risen. He's risen. Now we have everlasting life. God bless you, James. Yeah, Benedict, your hand was up. And then we come to Darren. And then Declan. Well, yes, everlasting life. So basically, to keep it short, Jesus died on the cross, and that death gave us everlasting life, that we will not go to hell, like some people back then in the Old Testament, because not everybody like was that humble to go to the pastor and ask them to like kill the sheep, because not everybody was believers back then. So some of them, most of them would actually end up in hell. But because Jesus came and died on the cross, now we have everlasting life that changes our fate so that we can go to heaven. God bless you. God bless you, um, Benedict. Yes, Darren, and then Declan. I wanted to say that the reason why Jesus came on this earth was the main reason. That was the main reason. It was to give us everlasting life. Because when you read John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So that was the whole, the whole reason. And, to, and because of Adam and Eve's sin, if they hadn't sinned, we will not, we, right now, Jesus wouldn't have come and had to endure all this pain. Because we would have already had everlasting life. That means that right now, will be able to talk to Adam and Eve and say, Hey, Adam, hi, Eve. <laughs> great contribution Darren. god bless you fantastic one i love that all all with the crucifixion and, and and resurrection of christ it's all about we having the main purpose for us to have everlasting life god richly bless you yes Declan. so when you talk about everlasting life the first thing i remember is about lazarus Hmm. When Lazarus died four days and yet Jesus came after four days to say, say he's going to rise up. Who do you think will say this? When you when you yourself, you don't even believe that, but first you believe that. Who do you think you say that? But then Jesus said this important scripture in John the chapter 11, the verse 25 and 26, that Jesus said to here, I am the I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies and he who lives and believes in him me will never die do you believe this amen 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 Declan. <laughs> great contribution fantastic one um jesse i just remembered a story i don't remember who exactly was but they had like a few weeks before they're about to die and then someone sent Samuel to tell that person that they were going to die not long ago, not long, not late, not, not long ago. So but then that person, but then that person, he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed to God. And God had mercy on them. And he added 15 more years to that person's life. Amen. Amen. Uh, Who can tell us the name of the person? Yes, there. I think it's Hezekiah. Actually, I know it's Hezekiah. You think or you know? I want I, I want those you know. Okay, okay, okay. God bless you. Fantastic one. God bless you. Yeah, precious ones, precious ones. Our last point, and then we will talk about, and then we'll bring our lesson to an end. I just want us to look at the power of his res resurrection. What is in it for us, precious one? Remember, because of his resurrection, there is a church and gifted persons like you within the body of Christ, right? There is what because of, 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 of his resurrection. Today, there is church 
that you and I will meet like this and fellowship together. And we have gifted precious ones like you to be here to share the word of God. So through the power of his resurrection, there is a church of today, right? Where we come and strengthen and encourage each other and fellowship with one another and share the word of God, the good news to others. Oh, hallelujah be unto the Lord. Through the power of his resurrection, we can fellowship together, right? May the Lord bless us all, precious ones. Contributions, contribution were great, fantastic one. Oh, I don't know, but I know one thing I know is that God is using you, precious ones, here to reach out to the lost souls, to reach out to all children around the world that needs the word of God through the power of his resurrection. Fear has been conquered. We've been born again. Oh, we, we are victorious. Oh, we have lordship over all. We are overcomers. Oh, through the power of his resurrection. Somebody's hand was up before we bring our lesson to an end. Yes, Darren. I wanted to say that I just searched up the, mean, the meaning of church. And according to Google, it says church is church in Christian doctrine, the Christian religious community as a whole, or a body or organization of Christian believers. So that is what church actually means. God bless you. God bless you. Fantastic. God richly bless you, Darren. Thank you for looking it up for us. I appreciate it. God richly bless you. So precious ones, Christians can look very different from, from, from one another. As we all know, we can be different. And they can hold widely what different what beliefs and, 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 and lifestyle. But one central belief that unites and in, inspires all true Christians, and, 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 and that is Jesus Christ who rose from the dead, right? So we may have different beliefs and, 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 and ideologies and different lifestyles, but what unites us together as one body is what the death and the resurrection of Christ. And, uh, and, and I remember Daryl saying that at the end of it all, through the death and the resurrection of Christ, the common thing, be the main goal is what, so that we may have eternal life so that we may have eternal life. Precious ones, the resurrection of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, and why is it important for us? We have learned so much, we have learned so much, but it is easy to imagine his work for us was finished a long ago. And it is now all up to us to believe his promises what and follow his teachings. We need to follow his teachings. But that would be what would be very wrong if we say that, oh God, oh, we are following this part and we are not doing that. Jesus is alive now, and it is he what he's still working for us right now. Jesus is on our side today, praying for us before the Father and leading us his church. Oh, hallelujah. When we worship, when we sing, he sings with us. When we worship, he sings with us. When we go out into the world, he controls all that happens, right? He goes before us. He wins for us. He fights our battles for us. He advocates for us. He rules the world as the king of kings and the lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. Our king will never forsake us. He will never forsake us. He is our friend today. Oh, hallelujah. He is our guide. He is our teacher today. He is our brother today. He reminds what? Reminding us that we are God dearly loved children, right? He reminds us every day that he loves us. God, I, what he has his eye on us, we precious ones. He advocates for us today, assuring us, he's assuring us that what? Every sin is forgiven. So when we sin against God, let's go before him and pray for forgiveness of sins and God will forgive us. Today, through the spirit, he is beside us with the power we need to live for Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Today, we are great joy. We have great joy that he is risen. He is risen. All things are gone and new things are here. May the Lord be with us all. May the Lord be with us all. 
precious ones. Oh, through the month of April, we have had fantastic lessons about the Easter, the death and the crucifixion of Christ, the communion and the Passover. And precious ones, next week, we come on your way with what? Kahoot, a game about story, the whole story about Easter. Yay! I can't wait. I can't wait for that game. Fantastic. I can't wait. I know you're also excited. We'll be here with Auntie Linda to play the game of, of a the whole story will be about the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ to kind of test our own selves whether we've able to retain but I pray we know you have learned something we know you have learned something may the Lord bless us all before we leave we want to wish all children that are celebrating their birthdays in the month of April we know Joshua Amuzo is not here with us this afternoon he is celebrating his birthday. Today is his birthday. He, we want to wish you Joshua Amuzu from New Jersey region. We love you. He was here with us last week, but he's not here today because today is his birthday. We love you. God bless you. Happy birthday, Joshua Muzu. We love you so much. May the Lord bless you. May, the more, may God bless you with more years, more blessed years, long life and healthy. And may God let you age in grace, in wisdom. May the Lord bless you all. Precious ones, how can we live without not reminding all of you about what Pentecostal puppet, Pentecostal puppet for, for kids. You know, it's the national competition for all children in COP USA Children's Ministry. Take part. I know you can preach. I know you can preach like a pastor. Oh, I love preaching. Precious ones, prepare towards it. Call your local leaders. Call your district um, um, leaders. Uh, children's ministry and your regional leaders for more information. The national competition will be held in August and the title you are supposed to prepare a sermon, right? And preach about a glorious child revived to possess the nation. And I know you can do it. You don't have to just read it. You can just have your point, elaborate on it, use memory verses, cite practical example, and preach to us. And even though it's a competition, you are still learning. We are all learning. I pray and I hope you watching me, you listening to me will take part. And at the end of it all, all glory will be given unto the Lord. We'll be back to you next week. We'll be back here next week with Kahoot. So stay tuned. And we are going to have a lot and a lot of fun. Until then, it's bye. We love you all. Bye. 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 We love you. Bye.